Hi, this is Miss Litton, and this is my wonderful period two honors biology class. Say hi. Hi. Okay, and we are about to discuss the nervous system. And the nervous system consists of two parts, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is in pink here on our slide. What are the two parts of the central nervous system? The brain, brain and the spinal cord. cord. Good, and the peripheral nervous system is everything? Outside. Yay. There are 12 pairs of nerves that come off your brain, um, 12 cranial nerves. There are 31 pairs of nerves that come off your spine. Those are all your peripheral nervous system. Some nerves are headed towards your central nervous system. Do you think those would be sensory or motor? If it's going towards your central nervous system. Sensory. sensory. Bringing information in. Motor nerves would be going what? Out. Away or out. Okay, and we'll talk about that as well. So on your notes, division. Central, what are you going to put in the highlighty thing there? Brain. Brain and spinal cord. And peripheral is all, all nerves. Side. All the nerves outside of the central. So here's a little diagram. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so the thing on the left, the big column on the left, what is that supposed to be? Spinal cord. Spinal cord. Good. All right. So if you have sensory receptors, you could have, let's say, an eyeball right here, and you could be bringing information here into your spinal cord, which will go up to your brain so you can process what you're seeing, okay? Let's say what you're seeing is a $100 bill laying out for you on your dresser because it was a gift from your Aunt Martha, okay? So you see that $100 bill. What do you want to do? Take it. Take it, okay? So you're gonna have a motor fiber coming back down, and that's gonna go to some muscle, okay, in your, that's, that's your hand, that's a really good hand. So you can <laughs> grab that $100 bill. Now, when you saw that $100 bill, are you think you're gonna be happy? Yeah. Because yeah. you're thinking, how can I spend that $100 bill? Okay, maybe, or maybe you're like, how can I put that in my bank? Okay, I don't know. So maybe your heart's gonna beat a little faster, it's gonna accelerate it, so you might also have some nerves going to, like here, your cardiac muscle, because your like, heart beats faster, maybe sweat, because you're like so excited that you have your 100, I don't know what it is. Maybe there's five of them there, okay? Um, and so that's part of your autonomic nervous system as well. So these are going out away. Um, you, your, um, your motor neurons, you have only two, two effectors, two targets. You respond to the world entirely using two effectors, muscles and glands. Every reaction you have <clears throat> is a muscle or a gland. Okay? Think about the last time you were sad. How did you respond? If you were really sad, what might you do? You might cry, right? Every response you have, you're taking an eye, you're surprised, you're angry, you're upset, you're happy. Those are all facial features, those are all muscles, right? Responding, glands, you're excited, you're sad, you're running, you're resting. All things, all of your effectors are either a muscle or a gland. Yes, ma'am? Um, does your like, eye look like you're actually doing a scan or something? Like, would you be blind or would you just see something? Such a great question, okay? So when we have sensory receptors, we don't perceive at the receptor, we perceive at the brain. So, for instance, you have on your tongue, maybe you have some sweet receptors and you have some bitter receptors. Those receptors right there, they're just perceiving the chemical, or that was such a bad word, they are getting triggered by that chemical, then that neuron is going to your brain and it's here in your brain where you <coughs> interpret everything. So if we switch those two neurons, then when you switch those two neurons, whatever is sweet would taste bitter and whatever is bitter would taste sweet. There are people who have had a leg, um, part of their leg, let's say, amputated, but the neuron that was in their foot, so that neuron was in their foot, it ran up their leg all the way to their brain. So let's say they had their leg cut off from the knee down. That neuron is still in their thigh all the way going to their brain. So sometimes people who have had a leg amputated will go, my foot itches because the neuron that was at the foot is still in their body going to their brain to the part that we perceive our foot, but they have nothing to scratch. Because all perception is here in your brain. 
That's where you perceive and interpret. Now, have you ever been at Disneyland? Have you been on like Star Tours? Mm -hmm. What do you do in Star Tours? Mm -hmm. You sit in a chair and you watch a movie. What does that chair do? Moves. Moves and changes. You, can you, have you ever felt nauseous on Star Tours? Like, mm, I'm going in a tunnel, okay? You think you actually are because they're shaking it to make you feel like you are. It's all perceived here. So you, it's like that altered reality. It's like the matrix, right? You think you're, as long as you're perceiving that it's happening, your body thinks that it's happening, okay? So all perception occurs in the brain. So if you could be blind for two reasons, did I not give you this example? You could be blind for two reasons. I could take Lily and I could stab her in the eye and she, I could ruin her eyes, right? She could be blind for that reason. Or I could take a bat and beat her here on the back of the head, right here at her occipital level. And she could be blind because she can't interpret the signal from her eye even though her eye is fine. All right, that's nice. That is All right, really quickly. So if you go to your notes, okay, sensory neurons are headed towards the CNS. Sensory neurons are headed towards the CNS. Motor neurons are headed away from the CNS and to one of the two effectors. What are the two effectors that you have? Glands and muscles. Glands. Yeah, muscles or glands, that's it. Now, in between these sensory and motor neurons, in between are what's called interneurons. Your brain is a collection of interneurons. And it's in your brain here that you perceive, right about here, this is called your parietal lobe. This is where you interpret everything. Here in the front, your frontal lobe is where you send information out. But here is where you interpret what that is and what that means. So your inner neurons are found in the CNS, between the sensory and motor neurons. Now, neurons, um, neurons are nerve cells, and you talked, of, you watch that in your ed puzzle right so this is like a typical neuron and the dendrites right here they receive information it could be a chemical or some sort of receptor cell that triggers it so the dendrites are all about receiving now it's not like this for all neurons sometimes the cell body with the nucleus might be part way through in 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 the middle of the neuron and I'll show you an example of that but in this case, the cell body is right here. So the dendrites receive, and then the axon sends. Um, and then here at the end of the axonal terminal, it could stimulate another neuron, or if it was a neuromuscular junction, it could stimulate a muscle to contract or a gland to secrete. And we'll learn later that it doesn't even have to go the whole length of the neuron. When it's got this myelin sheath on here, it can jump, 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 and it makes it a lot faster. Okay? Yes, I saw your hand up. Nothing? Okay, so on neuron structure, dendrites receive chemical message and usually sends it to the cell body. The cell body contains what? What's inside of the cell body? Nucleus, and you know what that does. The axon takes resulting message away, ultimately passing a chemical message to the next neuron or effector at the synapse. Chemical message to the next neuron or effector at the synapse. We're going to talk more about that. It's just the introduction. Next neuron or effector at the synapse. Wait, what's the takes resulting message like? I, I don't know where you're at. You, do you need to be more specific? Never mind. Okay. All right. And then what you're also seeing in this picture is this myelin sheath. And the myelin sheath. This is in the um, peripheral nervous system. The myelin sheath is made by what's called a Schwann cell. And this is insulation on the neuron. And this would be similar to, can I get eyes up here for a minute? Like wires that you have in your house, how they have a plastic coating on them. You don't want to crosstalk between the two wires. You don't want to touch it and get a message. So th there's some protection in there, but it's also to speed up the conduction because it's going so fast along that way. By so fast, I want you to take, put down your pins and pencils, take your two hands, clap twice, touch your nose, touch your ear, clap three times, clap once. Do you see how well you did that? And you did it together because you're in a social like setting. But I want you to think about what happened. 
I had to make the, my mouth say the right things, clap three times. My mouth tongue had to, those were sound waves carried through the air. Your pinna directed them down your auditory canal. They went down your audi auditory canal and they hit your tympanic membrane, your eardrum, which started vibrating, which vibrated your malus, then your incus, then your stapes. Your stapes <coughs> on your oval window of your cochlea. Oval window started vibrating. The fluid inside your cochlea started going. Your bacillar membrane went up and down. You have what's called a tectorial membrane and these hairs are embedded and those bent and that sent an action potential to your brain. Where in your brain, right here, you perceived clap three times. You then sent motor neurons down and to clap three times, you had to stimulate both your left and your right hand. And none of you screwed up. None of you went, miss, let me do it this time. <laughs> so close, I hit thumbs. No, I said clap three times and you're all do you see how fast that went? All of that message got in, processed, returned, and you did it together. And I said, touch your nose. None of you was like, did she say here? No, no. Okay, that you are able to do that so quickly has a lot to do with that myelin sheath and has a lot to do with that large mammalian brain you have that has all these crevices all over it, which increases. Yes, okay. So that's a pretty amazing little machine you got in that noggin. So um, that myelin sheath insulation layer generated by neuroglial cells surrounding long axons. The gaps here where it lands, these are called the nodes of Ranvier. Nodes of Ranvier, those are gaps in the layer. And the purpose, it insulates, it protects, and speeds up conduction. Okay, now, this is a motor neuron. Could Blue talk about this motor neuron? Talk about where the effector is, the whole nine yards. Go ahead, have a description right here. All right. So motor neurons go from your what? Okay, not always your brain. From your central nervous system towards a what? Effector. What are the two kinds of effectors? Muscles, Muscles and glands. So in this case, it's going to a muscle or gland. And it's going to stimulate that muscle to contract. Okay, um, who just did that? Blue? Slate, this is you. Talk about the direction of the impulse, what's going on. How is this one different than the other one? Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to get the And I kind of like this another Maybe that's the bottom of your foot and you just stepped on a what? A tap. See, and some of you, are, you have a visceral response. If I say, oh, your skin and you just stepped on a tack and the tack went into your foot. Well, some of you are going, because you're perceiving what that might feel like. You're envisioning what that might be, okay? And so it's sending that message. In this case, the cell body is not here at the dendrites. You know why? It doesn't need to process anything. The very fact that it triggered it, that's all it needs to do. And it's gonna go to your brain very quickly, okay, at that point, okay? And then this is an inner neuron. Where might you find an inner neuron? Brain. In your brain. Your brain and spinal cord consists of inner, inner neurons where it's receiving information, processing, and sending that information on. Okay, so if you look at this picture right here, you can see a close-up of that myelin sheath, that insulating layer, and the nodes of Ranvier. And then let's take a look at this picture. I believe it is fixed in the book that you have right now, but it depends on how old your book is. It might still be incorrectly labeled, but I want you to see here, here's your skin. Remember who receives information? Yes, sensory neurons receive. What part of the neuron receives? Dendrites. 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 OK? 
okay? And it sends that information. Here's a dendrite, here's the axon. Then the next thing should be another dendrite of the what? Interneuron? I don't know if you can see it in this picture, but do you see how it's mislabeled? They labeled it an axon. So I think in your book it's okay, in your version, but I, that's why I labeled it here. So here's the interneuron right here. Make sure you pay attention to this picture because these kind of things show up on tests and quizzes. Okay? Here's your interneuron. This could be right here, this interneuron in your brain or in your spinal cord. It's processing and it's going to send information out a motor neuron. Here's the dendrite, here's the axon, and it's going to make that muscle contract. So if I was scratching you right here and you were annoyed, you might pull away. Yeah? Um, how, how big are like synapses between the neurons? You can't even see it. It's like it's here, here, like you can see this. I'll show you a close up of a synapse because we're going to study just the synapse. All right. Um, next. Okay, you have a um, dragon to defend against. For some mm. reason, this one, it should have sound, but this one doesn't have sound. So um, you need to get the right shield for the right fireball. If you don't get the right one, um, if you don't get the right one, then it will not um, fire. Yeah, so you're independent on this one. See how many times you get burned. <laughs> okay, hopefully you had time to fight off your dragon. Were there any ones? Uh, do you need to go over them? Are you good? Did you go over them in your things? Do you have it? Are you still fighting your dragon? Yeah. Yeah, you, just, you got one wrong? No. I got None wrong? I got none. Anybody not get burned? We have one person for sure. Never got burned. Nice. I'm so done with you. Nicely done. All right. So now what we need to start talking about is how neurons fire. Okay, so we know neurons take messages. You know I said clap three times and you, boom, you clap. How did that, how did that message get from your ears to your brain and back out to your muscles again. There are two types of messages <clears throat> that go, electrical and chemical. Do you know which one works faster? Uh, electrical, right? Yeah, electrical. Electrical goes along the length of the neuron. The only time you have a chemical is where two neurons meet. And where two neurons meet, that's called a synapse. That's the slowest part. So the first thing I wanna talk to you about is the electrical part. So here is my drawing of a neuron, okay? <laughs> And you did this in your head puzzle. It looks like something from Dr. Seuss, I know. It looks like Italy. <laughs> it, looks yeah. like, it looks like So you have something called like the mm, mm pump. What is that? Sodium yeah. potassium pump. Good. And that pumps out what? Sodium. Sodium. And what does it pump inside? Potassium. Potassium. Okay? So I need, can you put your um, computers like half mass down so I can get your eyes up here? Okay, make sure you got this. So every time the sodium potassium pump, it pumps three sodiums out and two potassiums in. So if that happens multiple times, okay, you're gonna end up having, you're gonna end up having, and it's on the other side as well, okay, I just haven't done it. Oh, that's not it, there it is, okay. You're gonna have more positives on the outside than you have positives on the inside. inside. So who wins the positive test, out or in? Out. Out, okay. <laughs> Additionally, you have negatively charged ions and negatively charged proteins on the inside of a neuron. So when a neuron is at rest, the outside is positive relative to the inside. In fact, the differential across that is a difference of minus 70 millivolts, approximately, okay? So that, that's a neuron at rest. Also, the potassium gates that are on here are a little leaky, and both of these things want to go from a what? Higher concentration to a lower concentration. But it's like if you had a bad gate in your backyard, and sometimes the dog gets out, sometimes a little potassium also leaks back outside. So that also contributes to it. So if you look at your notes, resting potential, not firing, when a neuron does not have an electrical message along its length, when there's not something, anything triggered. Charges, the inside is what? 
inside is negative and the outside is positive. Inside is negative and the outside is positive due to the sodium potassium pump, which puts three sodium ions out and two potassium ions in. Three sodium out and two potassium in. Overall, there is more what outside? I agree, and more positive, yeah. More positive outside than you're on than inside. Okay, besides the sodium potassium pump, there are negatively charged ions slash proteins inside. Negatively charged ions slash proteins on the inside. And potassium tends to leak back out. The significance, it sets up a difference in charge. A polarized membrane that can be used to transmit an impulse. Sets up a difference in charge. Okay, now, hopefully you got this in the Ed Puzzle, but get this right now with me, okay, so we can finish strong on this part, okay? So take a look up here. What happens is when you receive some sort of chemical message, it's triggered on the dendrite. This is the dendrite, this would be the what? Uh, Axon, good. It can start to open up the sodium gates. Sodium wants to go from a higher, higher concentration, concentration to a lower concentration. concentration. So the sodium starts moving in. If enough sodium moves in, it reaches what's called a threshold, and then the gates start flying open, like dominoes along the length of this whole neuron. Sodium comes in and in and in, oh, not you, and in and in and in along the length of this whole neuron. And what happens is the positive charges that were outside just came inside. And it goes like this, along the length. <clears throat> that reversal of charge is called an action potential. And that's how you get this chemical message on this side of the neuron, goes all the way down to this side, this reversal of charge, and then this makes a chemical get released from the other end. So chemical message triggered a reversal of charge, and now you release another chemical message. That's how you get one neuron then talking to another neuron, muscle, or gland. Well, if you want this neuron to fire again, you better restore that resting potential. And the quick fix is to open up a different gate, because these are one-way gates. What's another gate you could open up? Potassium. Potassium. So the potassium then starts to go from a higher concentration to a lower concentration and remakes it positive on the outside so the neuron can fire again. But if it fires again and again and again, pretty sure, pretty soon all the potassium will be outside and all the sodium will be inside. So the long-term fix is the sodium potassium pump who pumps the sodium back out and the potassium back in and it resets it. This would be similar to if your mom said, if you said, mom, can I go out tonight? And she goes, yeah, sure, clean your room. Oh. And you said, okay. You ran up to your room, and instead of folding and putting away your clothes, you just shoved everything where? In your closet. In your closet under the bed. Is your room clean? Yes. yes. Technically. But if you continue to do that every time she tells you to clean your room, where's all your clothes going to end up being? Closet. Under your bed and in the closet. At some point, you have to take them and put them away. Okay? And that's what the sodium potassium pump does. So on your notes, where it says action potential, it's an impulse starting at the dendrite, sending at the axon. Little letter A, a chemical message is received at the dendrites. A chemical message is received at the dendrites. Um, and it begins opening up sodium gates. B, as the sodium gates open, sodium comes rushing into the neuron due to diffusion. C, the inside becomes less negative and may reach the threshold, opening all the neighboring gates. The inside becomes temporarily positive, which triggers the next 
neighboring sodium gate, etc. And this reversal of charge along the length of the neuron, little letter i, is called the impulse or the action potential. And it transmits the message from one end of the neuron to the other. The repolarization or the return of the resting potential. In the short term, potassium gates open and potassium takes sodium's place outside. <coughs> and the long-term fix is the sodium-potassium pump. The sodium-potassium pump. And we'll pick up right there next time, slide 13. Okay, good job. Review. I'll see you tomorrow for the review session, yes?